morning, everyone. It is my honor to welcome Mr. Manoj Sinha as our first keynote speaker of the Harvard U.S. India Initiative Conference. Organizers of the Harvard U.S. India Initiative, dear friends, though belated, but let me first of all wish each one of you a happy, safe, and most importantly, prosperous New Year. I am truly delighted to be amongst you. First, let me start by congratulating you for completing 10 successful years of HUII. It is a platform I truly value and find immensely enriching. It has been a nursing ground for new ideas and host to both relevant and powerful voices. I feel most alive and inspired amongst the students because you truly are the leaders of now building a brighter future and it is in you I repose my hope, trust and faith that with your bright minds and clear stream of reason you will truly leave this planet better than if you found it. There could not have been better time for an interaction with the young delegates and the students from all over the world joining through virtual mode 2021 is soaking us with much hope, fresh enthusiasm, and renewed energy. I know we all want to forget 2020 for unleashing one of the worst human tragedy. But as an optimistic student of politics, I believe the young talent pool carrying immense knowledge, wisdom, and energy is going to build a new future brick by brick. Ancient Indian teacher and economist Chanakya used to say, the world's biggest power is youth, and India with more than 50% of its population below the age of 25, and more than 65% below the age of 35, is not only hope for the globe, but also a crucial growth driver in the post-COVID world. Friends, there is a Free Child Institute in Washington, D.C., which I think is about seven hours drive from Harvard. They have a tagline, why should youth change the world? This was the, the same question that came to my mind when I was an engineering student at the Banaras Hindu University. I had never imagined that I would enter politics. As a student of engineering, my world was confined to Jack and Bohr. But let me tell you, our generation was faced with a stiff hurdle of another kind. As a great admirer of Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, one of the great, greatest educationists, reformer, politician, and the founder of the Banaras Hindu University, I was pained and hurt witnessing misguided elements within the university ruling the roost. It was desire of, a, of accountability, transparency, equal opportunity and right to assess justice for all with equity is what set me on the path that I have followed in my life. Above all, passion to serve my people, my country as an Indian comes first. <clears throat> One fine day I decided to join student politics. I can tell you from my own experience that we need to bring the change we want and wait for others to do that. When I became the president of Banaras Hindu University Students Union in 1982, we tried to change the inner core of the education system which Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, who is also fondly addressed as Mahamana, has dreamed of. We fought for restoring the glory of the university because Mahamana used to say, let righteous and dharma prevail and all communities and societies progress. Mahamna promoted a harmonious blend of oriental and modern education, which has now been adopted in India's new national education policy. My young friends, I believe our revolution in student days passes through three most crucial stages, action, revolution, and reform. 
This is what happened during my student politics days too, a combined effort of all of us in the student union not only brought peace on the campus but helped trigger a change in the lives of thousands of students. I must tell you, the youth power saves the structure of a society. Only you are blessed with the power to build character, raise moral strength and intellectual prowess for a better civilization. Friends, you are not in the university or in the college to follow the conventional wisdom or a crowd. You are there to, re to realize who you are and what you want. Be yourself. Your knowledge is about creating a new vision of life. Let me tell you about Mahamana Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya. He belonged to a humble family. Pandit Malviya overpowered economic inequality rather than allowing inequality to pull him down in his life. He was a great visionary who realized the potential of education to build a strong nation before the advent of the 20th century. It is equally important to understand that because of Mahamana, the country had a first and strong industrial policy despite devastation, devastation caused by the British rule. Besides his contribution in setting up the Engineering College of Banaras Hindu University, Mahamana played a major role in revival of three important sectors, textile industry, iron industry and shipping industry. On one hand, he was nurturing students and interested in engineering and on the other, the future of Indian industry. Mahamana knew that the revolution in both sectors, the education and the industry was absolutely necessary to change the essential core of India. And it was alchemical. A new generation was born. In order to truly understand the real revolution, let us look at the numbers of engineers and scientists working abroad. According to American National Science Foundation report of 2016, Indian immigrant scientists and engineers in the United States were 5.2 million. Today, the number, I am sure, would be much higher. Similarly, India exports engineers, doctors and scientists to other countries as well and their contribution to humankind is immense. Even the current U.S. administration has around 20 Indian Americans. It gives a peep into structural changes that took place within the country post-independence. Friends, when I look today's young generation, I find four remarkable qualities that are spontaneity, leadership quality, adaptability, and capability. If today's young generation worldwide has gripe the soul of the new civilization, it is because of their new ideas, new innovations and quest for doing something extraordinary. You may have heard the story of Nachiketa and Yam, the lord of death in the Katha Upanishad. The young boy was not satisfied with the material gifts Yamaraj would offer to him in lieu of not insisting for a reply to a query. You know why? Nachiketa insisted he shall be happy only if he gets an answer to a mystery, what comes after death? Even the gods have doubts. Yamaraj Kib caught he was in Nachiketa's search for truth. This story of inquisitive Indian echoes in the growth of Indian IT, medical artificial intelligence and new innovation. Friends, you are the most aware being on this planet pregnant with the potential to awaken humanity. It is this call that entrusts a bounden duty on you to persuade errant youth lost in conflicts and other disruptive activities world over to come back to mainstream. I know you can't do that jointly. You, I know you can do that jointly and severely. That day would mark another unrealized dimension of youth potential. I believe providing the right opportunity, utilizing the true potential of the people is the utmost duty of decision makers. Benjamin Franklin used to say, and I quote, when men are implied, they are best contenders.
and these are those times in the life of India where opportunities are in plenty. I sincerely believe India with a huge young talented population, friendly ecosystem and the trust we have managed to build that we can deliver on promises has allowed the nation to emerge as the popular destination for global entrepreneurs and corporates. It is also due to the emerging geopolitical situation which are burdened with the legacy of uncertainty borrowed from happenings of 2020 and years before that. Ample scope exists, exists for engagements with countries and multinationals, especially in strategic areas, energy, digital information and technology, environment and healthcare. In fact, India is ready to be the fulcrum of a new world order that is more just humane, industrious, beneficial to each other and empowering. In Jammu and Kashmir, when I took over six months ago as the Lieutenant Governor, I gave a mantra of four Ps, peace, progress, prosperity and people first. That you can say is my vision and 180 days later the narrative has changed. Development has replaced terror that our neighbor relentlessly exports. We have successfully and peacefully conducted the District Development Council election in Jammu and Kashmir. This has strengthened the grassroots democracy and finally established the three-tier Panchayati Raj system which was implemented in other states almost 28 years ago. Nevertheless, large, large turnout during the polls has demonstrated people's belief in the vibrant democracy and their urge to reap benefits of development that would come along with it. We have nurtured an ecosystem for incubating and unfurling startups in 15 sectors of the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Last month, we unveiled a new industrial scheme 2021 that offers 28,000 400 crores, that is 3.89 billion US dollars incentives for attracting investment. The government has proposed four vital incentives in the new scheme. Capital investment incentive, capital interest subvention, goods and service tax linked incentive, working capital interest subvention. We have also given service sector status of an industry in the new scheme. If you look at the latest economic survey, Jammu Kashmir service sector is growing at a historic pace and much ahead of states like Maharashtra, West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. We are taking industries to the block level to redress the disparities. The scheme is expected to create approximately 5 lakh jobs with a view to help small and medium IT ventures in Jammu and Kashmir. We are strengthening our infrastructure and setting up new projects. Similarly, more than 54,000 crore, approximately 7.4 billion US dollars worth power projects will take off in due course of time to make the union territory self-reliant in the energy sector. You will be surprised to know that despite vast hydro energy resources, Jammu Kashmir has been a power deficit union territory and in the last 70 years only 3500 megawatt capacity was added. However, with these new projects we aspire to generate more than 3500 megawatt in only 4-5 years to make Jammu Kashmir power surplus. I believe in the words of 12th century Kashmiri historian Kalhan who wrote in the famous Raj Tarangini and I quote, a lost opportunity is considered equivalent to the three worlds. And this is what exactly happened in the last 73 years. People were deprived of development, industries, good education, modern hospitals, infrastructure and job opportunities. Friends, you, all will, you, you will be surprised to know that a state like Bihar has 11 crore or 110 million population which is about 9 times that of Jammu Kashmir 
which has a population of 1 crore 30 lakhs, that is 13 million. But if you compare the population budget ratio, Jammu Kashmir receives more money every year than what Bihar gets. In 2020, Bihar state's total budget was slightly more than RS 2 lakh crore, that is 27.43 billion US dollars. On the other hand, Jammu Kashmir's budget was more than 1 lakh crore, that is 13.7 billion US dollars, and this year it would be around 1 lakh 11,000 crore, that is 15.2 billion US dollars. The Union Treaty has been getting a good amount of share from the National Exchequer, which I believe was far better than the most populous states. If you compare the number of government employees in Bihar and Jammu Kashmir, we have much more government implies than Bihar. It shows the zero attempts in the last 73 years to generate opportunities for youth. I must tell you, 70% of the Jammu and Kashmir population is below the age of 35, but due to lack of industries and private sector, the opportunity was limited to government jobs. Friends, due to absence of cohesive and integrated approach, socio-economic progress of individuals of the Union territory was far from expectations. Conscious of consequences of ignorance, we are determined to strive for adequate development, better infrastructure, good education, modern hospitals, and job opportunities for people of the region. From the very first day in office, I decided on collect collective measures like increase in investment, development of infrastructure,